<laughs> and uh, it's <laughs> rather a large syringe, wouldn't you say? And as you pull it out of its protective covering, my friends, look what's inside. It's a Pepsi can. <laughs> my friends, my doctor injected Molly Yard with Pepsi. <laughs> uh, somebody said that in, it's fun. Hey, you know, yesterday's show, or last night's show, or today's, depending on when you saw it, because it airs it so many times, is probably a show that has received more positive response than any of the shows that we have done this season, and there's a very good reason for it. We have presented you news that the dominant media culture ought to be showing you every day. We offered a critical analysis of President Clinton and the Democratic Party's budget plan for 1993-94 that you're not seeing anywhere else. It's available. Anybody can do what we did, but nobody does. And the reason we're doing it is precisely because we're not part of the same old, same old inside the beltway mentality that most of the dominant media culture happens to be. Today we're going to continue in the same vein as yesterday. What do we do program? Well, we pointed out how the 90 Budget Act is simply being redone. The words are the same, the proposals are the same, the means of selling it to the American people are identical to what happened in 1990. And we are aghast and we are appalled and frustrated to no end. And we want to continue this because our crack research staff has continued to put some things together. We got some more stuff tonight that's just going to make you mad, it's going, to, it's going to send a chill up your back, it will aggravate you, and you're going, to be, you're going to be frustrated when this show's over, and you're going to be saying, what can we do? We can sit here and talk about it, we can get mad, but what kind of action needs to be taken to stop this? I warn you, that's what's going to happen because it happened on our last show. Now, our last show started out with a, an analysis of the two options the Republican Party had at the outset of the presentation of Bill Clinton's economic plan. The plan doesn't work. It won't work. We demonstrated that on yesterday's show, and history shows us time and time again when you raise people's taxes, you slow down economic growth. It isn't going to work. The Republican strategy is get out of the way, let it pass, don't oppose it, so that the, when it does fail, the Republicans uh, can avoid blame because they'll get the blame. Remember, George Bush tried to please Democrats in the 1990 budget deal. He thought that they wanted good government. He thought that they wanted bipartisanship. And then he signs on to the deal, and the minute he signs on to it, they blame him for the last 12 years of failure, and then also accuse him of not keeping his promise never to raise taxes during his administration. Bottom line is, you can't do business with the liberal Democrats in Washington. They don't care about bipartisanship, and they don't care about government. They care about the acquisition of power. They care about expanding their own government, their own jobs. And if that means taking a little power and a little independence from you, then so be it. The second proposal, of course, the Republicans could have done was go ahead and oppose the thing on the grounds that they had to because the American people stand to be hurt. But in so doing, they run the risk of being blamed. Well, there's a column in the New York Times today by Alice Rivlin. Alice Rivlin used to run the Congressional Budget Office uh, some time ago. She's now a ranking budget official in the Clinton administration. And she wrote a column today entitled, Where is the Old Bob Dole? I'm going to read the opening paragraph and then a couple of others. I have such a long-standing respect for Senator Bob Dole. I fantasize that the old Bob Dole, the responsible statesman, will weigh back into the budget debate. The old Bob Dole, as finance committee chairman, then majority leader and finally minority leader, took on two presidents of his own party in 1982, 1985, and 1990 to try to tame the deficit. He got precious little White House support, but kept fighting for saner fiscal policy. Now, finally, we have a president who is leading the fight for fiscal responsibility. Bill Clinton did not have to be urged or cajoled. His first priority was an economic plan to reduce the deficit by $500 billion over five years. Let's go back to the first paragraph. These uh, presidents of his own party, there are Reagan and Bush, 1982, 85, and 1990. What happened in those three years? 1982 was the first year of the Reagan tax rate reductions, and 1985, TEFRA, Tax Equity Fiscal Reform Act, 
It was at the time the largest tax increase in American history, and guess what? Bob Dole helped sponsor it, and Ronald Reagan signed it, Ms. Rivlin. It happened. It wasn't that it didn't happen that caused you the problem. It's the fact that the largest tax increase in the history of the country at the time was signed by a Republican president, Ronald Reagan. And the thing that didn't happen in this bill that was promised was that for every new tax dollar that was generated, there was supposed to be an accompanying $2 reduction in spending. It never happened. The spending cuts never do. 1990 is the now famous budget deal. She is very happy for Bob Dole when he opposes a Republican president. That's what a statesman in the Republican Party is to a Democrat. Somebody opposes his own president. The simple fact of the matter is that they have no reason to beef because in all three of these years, the presidents involved signed tax increases. And those tax increases didn't work then, and they're not going to work now. Let's go back to September 30th of 1990, George Bush once again. The bipartisan leaders and I have reached agreement on the federal budget. Over five years, it would reduce the projected deficit by $500 billion. That is half a trillion dollars. Back now to Alice Rivlin in her column criticizing Bob Dole. Bill Clinton's first priority was an economic plan to reduce the deficit by $500 billion over five years. It's the same old bilge. Pardon me, my friends, Alice Rivlin's column today is exactly what we're getting from every other liberal Democrat in Washington for the past two and a half years. Liberal vomit. It is democratic puke. It is being regurgitated over and over again. It's nothing new. It is not change. Bob Dole, Ms. Rivlin, has learned his lesson. He's not going along for these tax increases anymore with Democrats. He's been burned too, too many times. Welcome to our side, Mr. Dole. Stay the course. Back with the rest of our show.